So there was yet another patch for Black Ops 3. This time it was mostly good changes. As of now, the patch is only for the PlayStation 4. PC and Xbox will likely receive it soon. I'd like to go over some of these adjustments with actual examples. Unless it's self-explanatory, you won't find me just reading you the patch notes like most other channels. I've learned you shouldn't trust anything you read unless you see it visually yourself. So first and foremost, the change to the kill counters and clan tags. I bet some of you didn't even know this was a thing. When I first got wind that you could put a kill counter on your weapon, I was beyond excited. I couldn't wait to add it to my favorite gun and have it actively tally my kills. But then I actually got it, and it was truly awful. On most weapons, it was like a game of Where's Waldo. Not only could you not find it, but when you did, it was barely legible. This has all changed now, and for the better. Allow me to show you some before and after examples. You'll notice that before the patch, the area had a black background with blue text. Now the background is orange with a yellow text. Look at this ICR example. You can barely see the counter, let alone read it. Now it's clearly visible and easy to read. The VMP also has a nice before and after picture. Before it was so tiny and not in a convenient spot. And now it's bright and well placed. Unfortunately though, there's one mishap. It would appear that diamond camo seems to cover some of these kill counters. It's not on every weapon, but on quite a few. For example, here's the black cell launcher before. Again, small and hard to read. And here it is after. Now if you put diamond camo on this black cell launcher, it covers the counter altogether. I'm not sure how they let this slip through, but hopefully they'll fix it soon. And by the way, if you weren't aware, to achieve the clan tag or kill counter, you have to prestige your weapon. The first prestige gives you the clan tag, and the second prestige gives you the kill counter. You can only have one on your weapon at a time as they sit in the exact same spot. When you pick your camos, you'll be able to see the outline of where it will be placed. So you can kind of gauge which camos will go with it and make it stand out a bit more. Next I wanted to touch base on the Iron Gym Supply Drop Weapon Nerf. The patch notes said they fixed the consecutive attack speed to be consistent with other melee weapons. I did a video comparing each and every supply drop melee weapon to the combat knife, and if you haven't seen it, I'd highly recommend scoping it out. My findings for the Iron Gym in that video were as follows. To kill two people or more in rapid succession, measuring from the moment the first kill appears on the kill feed until the second kill first appears as well, the time used to be .750 seconds. And this was the fastest rapid kill recovery time out of any melee weapon in the game. Now however, using the same measurement techniques, I found that the Iron Gym has a recovery time of 0.867 seconds which is the exact same time as the wrench. So while this isn't a drastic change, it's definitely noticeable. As far as I could tell, no other adjustments were made. The single kill time, the weapon movement speed, and the swing animation all remained as they were before this patch. The next change was actually a surprise to me. I had no idea it was a glitch to begin with. So the patch notes read as follows. Fix the bug where the rolling thunder could be seen on the minimap by enemies who are not using the engineer perk. So prior to this patch, when an enemy called in a rolling thunder, you would see all the drones as blue on your minimap. And this of course allowed people to know exactly where the drones would drop and ultimately be able to get out of the way. Now however, if you're not running the engineer perk and a rolling thunder gets called in, there's no indication on your minimap whatsoever. So unless you're looking up in the sky, you may just get bombarded unexpectedly. And this is a good change to an otherwise terrible score streak. The only weapon to receive a buff in this patch was the ICR which of course surprised a lot of people. While it may be one of the weaker assault rifles, it was already known to be very accurate. The patch notes indicate that it received increased accuracy and that it now has less recoil. Unfortunately, since this patch isn't out on the PC yet, no one has the exact adjustment numbers. What I do have, however, is pre-patch footage as well as post-patch footage. So this is the recoil pattern of the ICR with no attachments prior to the patch. It kicked enough vertically to leave a big gap in between the shots. Now here's the recoil pattern with no attachments after the patch. The left pattern definitely filled in the gap, but it's the right pattern that impressed me. Again, the middle area seems fully filled in, and even the stray bullets that went vertically were grouped much tighter together. So then I repeated the same test from the same spot with the addition of grip this time. And if you didn't know, the grip attachment gives a 7.5 reduction in kick per shot and the ICR is one of the weapons that this was definitely noticeable on. So here's the recoil pattern of the ICR before the patch with the grip attachment. Again, it appears to be a bit vertically oriented, but decently clumped together still. The post-patch recoil patterns with grip tell a different story. You'll notice the pattern is much more tighter, 
What I found strange is that the pattern is no longer vertical, but instead it's now much more horizontal. I tried to sync up the before and after clips in slow motion as best as I could. When doing so, it would appear that the post-buff ICR doesn't weeble wobble as much as it used to. But visually, it's hard to tell just how big of a buff this was. I wouldn't say the buff was that drastic, but it's enough to notice. And lastly, the patch fixed a few things I had covered in some recent videos. The main thing I wanted to talk about was the addition of ricochet damage for care package owners in hardcore mode. If you missed my video on teammates ganking your care package in hardcore, I talked about how it was becoming a frustrating issue to deal with. What this change has done is made it virtually impossible to steal a teammate's care package now. As soon as you drop the care package marker down, you'll receive a temporary ricochet bonus. This bonus lasts, as far as I can tell at least, the entire duration of the care package until you take it. I stood at my care package a while after it dropped and my teammates were still getting killed by the ricochet. One issue they didn't fix is the beginning of the round ricochet exploit. If you call on your care package at the start of the round, a teammate can stand directly on top of the drop zone and have it crush him. But the start of the round offers everyone ricochet protection briefly. So this in turn will kill you. So while it is now safe to run a care package again in hardcore mode, I highly advise you not to call it in at the start of a round until this issue gets dealt with as well. The patch covered more fixes and updates, but that's all I wanted to cover extensively. Now I know that Call of Duty channels get saturated with patch update videos the day we receive a download. I can't stand when people just read you the patch notes with no examples whatsoever of what was fixed, or even how it used to perform before the patch. That absolutely drives me to drink. I don't know about you guys, but I can't wait to place the kill counters on all of my weapons. Nothing strokes my eagle more than watching a digital counter actively tally each and every kill I make. Happy hunting.